In today's episode of EU4, you'll learn the latest history of Venice, which is now awaiting a new story and new possibilities. Will the Venetian Republic expand to encompass all of Italy and become a new nation? Will it venture further to conquer new lands? Or perhaps it will reclaim lost territory from the Ottoman Empire, leading to its downfall? Who knows? You'll have the opportunity to find out in the latest EU4 expansion, Winds of Change. Welcome Imperialist Lucas here. Venice, the most serene republic, it's definitely the wealthiest and most powerful among the Italian states. However, the Venetian Republic differs from all other Italian republics. Venice is governed by the highest official called the Doge, currently Francesco Foscari. Unfortunately, he is not an absolute ruler and must contend with the council. And the council even more resists and opposes the ruler if he proves to be more effective. At least it should, but I guess that's not the case now. The council comprises representatives of Vonishan factions, the aristocrats, traders and guilds. Depending on which faction dominates, besides the regular bonuses for Venice, different actions can be taken within the Venetian council. Aristocrats, traders or guild representatives offer different benefits. Unfortunately, the more the council opposes the doge's authority, the worse it is for Venice. And if they practically hold absolute power, they can even resist declaring wars. That's somewhat problematic. Francesco initially sought to increase his power in Venice as it was currently limited. He had to gain the support of all social estates. However, he distributed privileges cautiously, mainly focusing on the nobility for whom he subsequently carried out a mission during the National Assembly. In return, he not only acquired a very good cheap minister but also strengthened his power, the power of the Doge. Francesco Foscari's leadership as Doge of Venice from 1423 to 1457 was a period of both accomplishments and challenges. His rule oversaw Venice's territorial expansion in Italy and the Eastern Mediterranean, enhancing its maritime and trade influence. Plus, a lot more text to read. But thanks to this, the power of the Council of Ten was limited. Then Francesco focused on establishing the Republic's army and rebuilding it. Mercenaries were hired and the Corsican Guard, which was quite proficient in capturing forts, was employed. Venetian shipyards, on the other hand, began building a large number of galleys needed to dominate the Mediterranean Sea. Venice's maritime doctrine relied on supplies from the Venetian arsenal, which, as one could guess, was located in Venice and greatly benefited the Venetian fleet. Among the more significant buildings here was the Doge's Palace. Our Venetian Doge also hired excellent advisors to assist him in governance. And at this point, he wanted the council to act more balanced. Now that internal affairs have begun to run their course, the Doge reached out beyond the borders in search of allies. Austria loves me! Somehow, the Republic of Venice and the Habsburg Archduchy held each other in high esteem, so an alliance was formed with the Austrians, especially since they were rivals of the Ottomans. Doge Foscari also desired to create a trade league responsible for collective security. Therefore, there are several smaller states, mainly Italian ones, were invited to join. Then Venice declared several states as its rivals, mostly smaller ones that were easy targets. The Doge also initiated diplomatic efforts aimed at asserting territorial claims. Army main maintenance as well as fortress upkeep were reduced and an alliance with France was maintained. Diplomats were then sent to Austria and France to improve relations with their courts. Unfortunately, Venetian enemies seem to be more effective diplomatically now, guaranteeing Serbia's safety. But seriously, it seems Paradox might have improved the AI's actions. Pretty cool! An alliance with the Papacy was also formed, as it's better to keep Venetian Ducats in the pocket than pay the Pope to avoid excommunication. Creating the Trade League proved beneficial, increasing not only the fleet but also the army limit. Less than a year later, Venetian armies were prepared for invasion, specifically an invasion of Constantinople and the northern part of Italy. But it wasn't the right time yet. Initially, mercenaries were transported from Venice to the Greek territories. And just before the war broke out, Francesco died. <coughs> and a new doge had to be chosen. Through a lottery, Girolamo Dalviano emerged as the winner. I'm struggling with these Italian names. Quite a young ruler, 51 years old. He turned out to be quite talented in plotting intrigues and conspiracies. He continued the previous doge's actions, preparing the Venetian army for war, which he then declared on Constantinople without allies' assistance. Regular Venetian troops began besieging Constantinople, which surprisingly surrendered without a fight. The new doge Girolamo also became a patron of the arts establishing a grand school for the Venetian region. Meanwhile, the Venetian fleet blockaded Constantinople's ports for a quicker conquest. After the fall of Athens, the siege of the fortress in Morea commenced. News reached Venice of the conclusion of the Aragonese Neapolitan Union, allowing that country to become an easy target for future conquests. 
unless it forms strong alliances. After the fall of Constantinople, the decision was made to plunder the city, but not completely, you know, with discipline. Then a clash occurred between the Venetian army and the Byzantine army in the plains of Mesembria. The latter was defeated despite great losses. This victory greatly boosted Venice's prestige, allowing it to become a true patron of the arts, though the next Venetian victory was even greater. The remnants of the Byzantine fleet were also sunk, enabling access to the Wallachian fortresses after obtaining passage from Moldavia. The mercenaries besieged these fortresses, which fell after a short siege. After a while, Newman then agreed to make peace with Venice for war reparations and monetary gratuities, and the Byzantine Empire ceased to exist. A new institution of the Renaissance was born in Venice. The best Italian thinkers are flocking to this city. Did it really work out on the first try? Unfortunately, Venice had to make a separate peace with England, because France, for some reason, didn't want to, worsening relations between the two countries. However, it was necessary for several reasons. First, to create two vassals after conquests, the Republic of Bulgaria and the Republic of Byzantium. This allowed the Venetian Republic to take advantage of the moment when Ottoman armies were no longer on the Balkans but in Anatolia. Girolamo also aimed for Venice to become a center of artistic intelligence and higher expression. Venice's Renaissance champion. Tiziano stands out as a distinguished painter from the Italian Renaissance, born in Pieve di Cadore, in proximity to Venice. Renowned for his adept handling of color and groundbreaking brushwork techniques, Titiano's artistic journey spans over seven decades. We could hire him for our court or let him demonstrate his skills further during the Italian Renaissance. What more can we learn about this? Blah, blah, blah. A lot of text to read, fascinating text perhaps. And the best part is that despite everything, Tiziano is still hired at our court. As merchants came to power, they provided Venice with five galleys. There also came a time to renew Venice's wooden pilings, which positively affected the country's economy, as well as further expanding Venice as the Pearl of Eruope, Europe. And when Venetian armies took their place, just like the fleet, war with the Ottoman Empire began to reclaim the Byzantine fortress in Gelibolu. Key to the plan in this war was the swift capture of this fortress achieved in 27 days. Those significant losses were suffered. For now, the Doge has not decided to call allies from Austria, and as planned, Ottoman armies were on the other side of the strait. Next, the Venetian troops set a trap for the Ottoman forces. Additionally, the Republic's fleet blockaded the strait. Despite this, the Ottoman fleet attempted to break the blockade. Oh, a new loading screen. After winning several consecutive battles, the Venetian fleet initiated a maritime blockade of the entire Ottoman Empire. A splendid future lay ahead for the Republic. Since the Doge indulged in intrigues, he focused on creating a suitable policies in Venice. Meanwhile, our Doge consolidated his power. Since there were no elections anyway, what's the problem? Actions were also taken with pirates, or rather, they were bribed to work for Venice. The entire Venetian army also crossed the strait and moved to besiege the fortress in Sugla, which fell within six months. On April 1st, 1458, the following peace treaty was concluded with the Ottoman Empire. All Byzantine territories were recovered, along with several Bulgarian territories, and significant reparations were obtained from the Ottoman Empire. However, this was part of the Venetian Doge's plan to attack Serbia and draw the Ottoman Empire, with Austria's help, into another war against Venice. The Ottoman Empire was already so indebted from the previous war that it couldn't muster a full army for this new conflict. With the Venetian fleet alone, Ottoman fortresses were bombarded, then quickly stormed. Meanwhile, the Venetian Doge was adamant about not letting any city in Italy surpass Venice in wealth and beauty. Therefore, he sponsored the expansion of the minor basilica in Annipalo, which improved relations with the Pope. Subsequently, Consequently, the Ottoman army was completely destroyed, thoroughly resulting in a new short-lived peace. Unfortunately, although the Venetian Republic continued to grow in strength, so did the Council of Ten, with over a thousand hereditary memberships. The Great Council of Venice is perhaps not always the quickest and most efficient governing body. It is therefore not surprising that the greater flexibility of the small Council of Ten, originally intended to safeguard the Republic from plot and conspiracies, has led to them assuming more and more power, and frankly I'd rather limit its power. Unless I support it. No. After seizing all of Serbia, it became possible to attack the Hungarian forces. With the Austrian army's assistance. Our Grand Army had a decisive advantage over the Hungarians, who suffered a humiliating defeat. Hungary emerged from the war not only humiliated, but also had to relinquish Croatian territories and pay a large tribute to Venice. It also appeared that the Ottoman Empire was in a major crisis, being attacked by many of its smaller neighbors. 
and after many victories, Venice attained such international splendor that all looked more favorably upon its conquest. Therefore, the subjugation of the entire region of Serbia wasn't viewed so negatively worldwide. Venetian reforms tended towards strengthening ties with the clergy rather than viewing it as an enemy for now. After all these wars, it became necessary to reduce autonomy throughout the entire territory of Venice. Which Venice should I give the land to? Because uh, I don't know. And after occupying the rest of Italy and Herzegovina, Epirus was annexed, and more importantly, Cyprus, which would serve as a naval base in wars against the Mamluk Sultanate. Should I annul the laws restricting the Ten? The reforms to reign in the Council of Ten has calmed many of the members of the Great Council, but in effect the Ten still exert a great deal of authority that they formerly should not have. Given how inefficient the Great Council with its countless members can be at times, this is, however, not necessarily a bad thing. Ahead of the Republic lies a difficult choice, although at this point the Council's influence is truly minimal. The annexation of Nexus began, followed by the conquest of most of Bosnia and Croatia, before reclaiming the last Bulgarian territories from the Ottoman Empire. Serbian culture became an integral part of the Republic aimed at faster conversion of these territories to the Catholic faith. News has reached us that Burgundy has decided to remain Burgundy under the rule of Duchess Maria de Burgun. A woman on the throne, yuck, revolution in Venice. For some time now, the Republic has seen an increased control of the guilds on the Venetian political stage. Relying on a large number of apprentices, small shop owners and craftsmen, this faction has been able to confiscate all power within the government and to monopolize all offices in the administration. And unfortunately, it seems our ruler might have to step down. But hasn't he stepped down yet? The Third Venetian War with the Ottoman Empire ends with the expulsion of the latter from the Balkans. Venice practically rules most of the region now. Of course, I forgot to make territorial claims to Ragusa. Then the mines in Kosovo were expanded to fill the Venetian treasury with pure gold. Finally, the time has come for Venice to focus solely on the northern regions of Italy. Ten years ago, the Italian duchies left the empire. And thanks to effective espionage campaigns, practically no country sees Venice as a threat. Since the Venetian army still rely on mercenary contractors, it was decided to reform this form of contracting. After all these wars, Venice knew the direction of its military aspiration. Whether to expand its own army, secure better contracts with mercenaries, or perhaps the time has come for naval dominance. This time, Venice opted for a standard land army. The Duchess of Burgundy was probably showing the French king, who really rules in the area. <coughs> Under the reign of another young doge, most say Venice decided to attack the Republic of Milan, or rather the duchy, since this duchy was its main competitor in the region. The Milanese army was defeated by mercenaries on our own territory, completely crushed. Standard armies began to besiege forts. The growing in power Venetian Republic adopted an offensive doctrine. The key was the rapid capture of forts. Meanwhile, Venetian diplomacy began to improve relations with smaller duchies in Italy for their later peaceful conquest. The famous Sempiterni company was founded in Venice, known for stockings, which were worn by men at that time too. This allowed us to acquire a famous Venetian artist who worked practically for free. During the 15th and 16th centuries, theatre in Venice was a vibrant and influential cultural phenomenon. The city was home to some of the earliest permanent theatres in Europe, such as Teatro di San Casino, which opened in 1637, and the Teatro Olimpico. Perhaps I built these theatres too early, but what can I do? I'll have a very cheap advisor now. In my opinion, Venice has more of these cheaper administrative advisors than Poland. The war with Milan ended with the conquest of most of its territory, followed by looting. Venice must become the greatest city in the area. This allowed the Republic to devise further plans for the conquest of Italy and even the destruction of the Austrian Emperor. The newly conquered Lombardy area was quickly integrated into the Republic with its autonomy swiftly reduced. The process of annexing the Byzantine and Bulgarian republics also began. An investment was made in another educational center in Lombardy which contributed to the region's development. This helped Venice's splendor reach very high levels again and promoted the Great Carnival celebrations at the San Marco Square. The Carnival of Venice in the 15th century is a vibrant and extravagant event known for its opulent masks and costumes. It lasts for several weeks leading up to Lent. Want to know more? Here you go. Fascinating. Corruption in Venice is truly a significant financial problem. Though small, preventing it costs a fortune. Reforms of power distribution were implemented, making the states more willing to cooperate when the Doge called for an assembly. In 1485, Venice finally decided to expand its arsenal for the fleet, making the Mediterranean fleet even more effective. Papal influence was utilized and guild support was sought again, making building new structures in Venice very cheap. Church construction began first, since the Republic had to be a very peaceful nation for a long time. Finally, the moment came as the Bulgarian Republic was annexed. To focus on the smaller Italian republics where we could spend money. 
freedom can be sold for Venetian ducats. Venice became such a magnificent city that it was considered the capital of Europe. The territories after Bulgaria and Byzantium were very undeveloped. There was barely one church here. Even in Constantinople, which was not as powerful as before, there were no buildings. So instead of expanding the Doge's palace, investments were made in trade and production. The Genoese colony in Byzantium was also annexed to the city and lost its autonomy. Surely this will positively impact the city's development. How about making it an orthodox Venetian republic? However, after the annexation of Byzantium to the republic, Venice became really wealthy. Loans were taken and the construction of the Doge's palace began. It was crucial for Venice to maintain and expand its arsenal so that the Venetian fleet could dominate the entire Mediterranean Sea. And thanks to maritime heritage and uh, an even better fleet, Venice could effectively build ships. Francocracy. Since we conquered Constantinople with the Fourth Crusade, we will benefit greatly from it. Venetian culture and the Catholic religion of Constantinople. Another incredible administrative advisor was born in Venice, Leonardo da Vinci. And I haven't even taken this yet. All of Florence's neighbors became vassals of Venice, which really only leaves one thing, war with Florence, which shouldn't be too hard as all Venetian allies will support it. Allied forces first struck Savoy. The aim was for this duchy to end its war with Venice as soon as possible. The next target was the Kingdom of Naples. Meanwhile, Venice's economic power grew to the point where it introduced a modern banking system. And when the guild is in power, the costs of their actions are reduced. So after a few years, Florence found itself under Venetian rule. Then a massive process of expanding the entire republic public began in Venice, local schools were also opened earlier, and thus began the Golden Venetian Era. The Republic focused mainly on the development of production and human resources. Unfortunately, this led to some management problems, therefore it was decided to build a series of courts to support local governance. At the age of 80, Mosse stepped down, and he was totally replaced by lottery with Leonardo Flangini who was even a talented diplomat. Relazioni are reports that our ambassadors sent to the government detailing the political situation. This will make our inquisition even more effective. Hey, this changed its function rather than added to it? The Doge's Palace. By the 16th century, the Doge's Palace had undergone substantial renovations and expansions resulting in a significant augmentation of its grandeur. One of the most remarkable developments was the completion of its iconic facade, which faced the Grand Canal, showcasing the palace's architectural splendor to all who approach by water. Yes, it certainly strengthened the Doge's authority, Venice and the Italian power struggle. Many prospecting monarchs and individuals of great influence have sought to control the fate of our peninsula. With an endless series of strife and wars, famine and destruction, these powerful men seek to tame our people and subjugate us. Leonardo Flangini will unify Italy. Let's keep our fingers crossed for him because at this moment we can seize full power. This time, Venetian armies march straight to Savoy after which only attacking its allies remained. No one expected Venetian conquest to be so powerful, and thus the Republic became an empire. All of this led to the demise of old Venetian rival. Then Venice focused on subduing the remaining archipelagos, further increasing Venice's trading power in the region. It was the moment when Venice broke its alliance with Austria. You know, there's a mission here, so I had to do it. The conversion of the Balkans to the Catholic faith also went quite smoothly. The Venetian Doge continually utilized his administrative skills to reform the Republic faster. And this process proceeded quite efficiently and swiftly. It was also time to introduce merchant representatives into our Venetian council, which, reformed, turned into a regular parliament. Actually, the Venetian Grand Parliament, or rather the Venetian Great Council. I hope I don't have to distribute all these thousand seats. The Venetian fleet, both commercial and military, was modernized. Modern manufactories, specializing solely in cattle breeding, were also established to further increase Venetian profit. Grand Doge Leonardo conceived a very ambitious plan, namely to dissolve the Holy Roman Empire, which was neither holy nor Roman, but German. To achieve this, he began preparations by improving relations with all electors. What are 60,000 Polish troops doing here? It seems that the Protestant Reformation will push through in Eastern Europe. After capturing many new ports in the Genoese trade, their expansion began, both maritime and on land. The era of the Reformation arrived. Thanks to the arsenal, new merchant ships are literally being built in Venice on a daily basis. For some reason, the aristocracy decided to rebel against us, despite the lack of substantial support. But the rebellion was quickly quelled. 
through excellent Venetian diplomacy, alliances were forged with literally every elector. In September 1515, the period of peace with Austria came to an end. Venetian armies, supported by French allies, invaded Austrian territory to secure a very profitable province. The Venetian fleet itself seized the Strait of Almeria to safeguard the Mediterranean Sea from Spanish influence. While the Venetian fleet dealt with the Spanish fleet, the army advanced into Austria to quickly capture the Tyrol province and the Austrian capital. The Republic's army suffered several humiliating defeats, mainly due to the mountainous fortresses. Therefore, a reorganization into two fronts was made. After the fall of Vienna, part of the army moved towards Prague, while the other sought Austrian forces, which were constantly fleeing from the second group of Republican troops. Another siege of the mountain fortresses began. After this quick strike, the Holy Roman Empire was destroyed. Glory to Venice! Venice itself will now experience significant infrastructural growth throughout the country. And after the fall of the empire, it was time to dissolve unnecessary alliances. While the Venetian offensive goes well, France is faring very poorly. So poorly that the Republic's armies must come to its aid, first directing their attack on Paris to crush the Austrian armies remaining there. Then the Republic's armies marched south to defeat the Spanish armies, besieging several French fortresses. As Venetian reserves began to dwindle, it became crucial to quickly make peace with Spain. Therefore, Roussillon was bypassed and a direct strike was made on the Spanish capital to capture it as quickly as possible. It was easy, because in the meantime, Aragonese and Spanish forces were mainly in France. After the capital's fall, only neighboring provinces remained to be occupied. After making peace with Spain, the Republic gained the entire Tyrol territory and Carniola, while uh, returning part of the Czech provinces to them, after seizing the palace in Savoy, it was expanded, resulting in a truly powerful city hall and another incredibly cheap advisor. Conscription into the Venetian army was increased everywhere, unfortunately encountering significant problems. The Venetian Republic gained the ability to establish trade protectorates, which would provide various bonuses for owning such a country. However, its creation turned out to be more difficult than anticipated. Finally, the time of the Venetian Pope arrived, which may not bode well for our neighbors. For a very simple reason, more forgiveness is given to the Pope during conquests. And he's quite young. The Venetian Doge knew it was the best time to attack the Two Sicilies. Yes, the Two Sicilies, because Naples is no more, just as it turned out, the Two Sicilies had no fortress. Remember, there should never be any sparing in defense. The fleets of the Two Sicilies were heavily damaged, even more so, and ultimately sunk. And thanks to policies from infrastructure, we can even more effectively capture fortresses and very quickly add that. 47 days. The first war with the Two Sicilies ended with the capture of almost the entire continental part, and hardly anyone cared. Leveraging its power, the Venetian Republic attacked the Spanish Empire, well, with the help of allies. Venice quickly broke through the Spanish defense, just as France did in Roussillon. Simultaneously, it was time to expand manufactories of other goods throughout Venice. And now I have to manually click through all these yellow provinces. The first war with Spain wasn't too bloody and actually quite easy. It was time to exploit the very weak situation of the Mamluks and attack them for the Alexandrian territories. Though a very powerful sultan, he cannot muster an army comparable to ours. Venetian armies attacked from two sides, both through the Anatolian border and by landing directly in Egypt. The sultanate's armies stood no chance against us. God showing a battle is quite an art in this game. Well, the war went much smoother than I expected. But essentially, Venice acquired all the territories it aimed for. And all this further strengthened Venetian trade in the region. After annexing the Aleppo region and the Delta, special trade privileges were granted to these areas, which positively influenced the number of Venetian merchants. The Republic was then able to establish new trade routes, channeling wealth to Venice. Ducats flowed abundantly, mostly spent on expanding monumental buildings that showcased Venice's glory. Yes, meanwhile, another piece of the two Sicilies was conquered, leading to the downfall of the Ottoman Empire. All of this was necessary to create the great golden Venetian Republic. Only it turned out that it couldn't be built without universities. It would be easier to create Italy, but that might be another country. Let me know in the comments. Besides, the Venetian path is practically complete now, especially concerning the unification of Italy. In reality, only the greatest adventures lie ahead for Venice now, venturing towards the riches of the New World, or expanding the Suez Canal, one of the two. Certainly, Venice's military foundations will assist in further conquests. In this episode, I show how to transform the small Florentine Republic into a mighty Florentine theocracy. Excellent for tall gameplay, focusing on province development, see how green Italy is. Additionally, with the Ibadi religion, one of Islam's sects.